What I'm about to tell you has the ability to 10x the speed of your data job hunt. And it's not very difficult and it should only take like an hour. What is it? Lying on your resume. But hold on, before you stop listening and you exit out of this episode, let me explain myself. In today's job market, every data job you find is oversaturated, especially the entry-level roles. There's going to be so many candidates. There's like literally dozens, hundreds, thousands of applicants for every job that you're going to be applying for. So companies have to use something to keep track of all these applicants. And they use what's called the ATS or the Applicant Tracking System. And that helps them organize and qualify applicants like me and you. Now, the ATS, the Applicant Tracking System, is very dependent on your resume. In fact, that's 90% of it. It's all it really sees. And guess what? You might be surprised, but the ATS is kind of dumb. It's not like using any sort of like crazy AI. It's not using machine learning. A lot of the times, it's very stupid logic. Like, how good are you at SQL? We're going to count how many times you use the word SQL on your resume. I'm telling you, it is so dumb. But that's good for you. And you can actually hack your way to the top of the ATS using these three resume tricks. Now, hack number one was demonstrated just masterfully to me recently when my wife and I were planning our trip to Iceland. Specifically, we wanted to go to like central Iceland, high up in the mountains, to this place where they call the Highlands. In order to get there, you have to have a pretty beefed up car. And the one we were renting was not going to be adequate to get there. So we ended up finding a resort that we could actually book a private car to, like private transfer. That was going to be about a two hour drive. From there to do the hike that we wanted to do in the Highlands, it was going to be an additional 20 minute drive. Now we were trying to figure out, we had limited time here. We only had about, let's see, six hours that we were going to be able to be in this area. And we really wanted to do this cool hike in the Highlands. And I was, as I was trying to figure all this out, I actually decided to, to go ahead and take the punch and make the long distance international call to this resort to try to figure out how we could get from the resort to the hike start. And I, I realized on the website that they had e-mountain bike tours and I love to mountain bike. And so I thought, wow, let's do this e-mountain bike. So I call and I ask my question and the receptionist says, oh, let me give me, let me give you two my colleague here, he'll be able to answer the questions a lot better. And that is when I met Dijon. So Dijon and I are talking on the phone and I, I, I explain the situation to Dijon and he says, yes, absolutely. We can totally do that for you. We'll arrange it. I'm actually the mountain bike manager. And so I'll be, you know, don't worry about it. I've got you taken care of. And I said, okay, great. I'm happy to, to book it. I'm happy to pay and get this going. And he said, no, don't worry about it. Just when you get here, we'll pay and we'll go from there. And we said, okay, so we're just going to ask for Dijon, the mountain bike manager. And he said, yes, that's exactly what you do. So fast forward, we've been in Iceland a couple of days and we get onto our private car transfer, which actually has two other people on it, surprisingly. And those two other people are actually employees at the resort. And so we meet them and have our greetings. We explain to them what our plan is. And we ask if they know about, if they know Dijon. And they said, Dijon, well, it's not a very big resort that you're going to. And the only person that works there with the name Dijon is a restaurant server. But sometimes he likes to take clients out on mountain biking, but he is not the mountain bike manager. That is someone else. And he has really no authority to approve what your guys' tour was. And I'm laughing my head off because Dijon did exactly what number one resume hack is. And that is to change your job title on the job title section. Give yourself your own job title. Specifically, there's a section in your resume that is called the job title section. This is not in your experience section. This is separate. This is usually towards the header of your resume with all your contact info, or it might even be part of your written summary at the top. In those summaries up there, you want to include the job title you are trying to get. So for example, if you are a high school, let's say science teacher, you wouldn't say science teacher in this section. If you're trying to become a data analyst, you would say data analyst. The problem with entry-level jobs is they all require experience, right? That's what we're seeing in today's market. Even the entry-level jobs are like two to five years of experience. The ATS, though, is pretty dumb. It really just is trying to check how many times you have the word data analyst listed on your resume. And so the job title section is a great opportunity for you to trick or lie to the ATS and pretend like you have more experience than you do. So I like to put data analyst in the job title section. 
I like to also include it inside of the written summary section right there. And that way, I'm increasing my opportunity for the ATS to actually accept me and have my resume be reviewed by a human. Now, resume hack number two is actually pretty similar, and that is to give yourself your own job title, but that'll be specifically in your experience section. When I was applying for jobs, I would often change what my title was on my resume. Titles don't really mean anything to the world. They are very subjective, and what one role is at one company might be something very different at another company. And so if you can actually back up the bullets and you can feel like I can, you know, my job is not a data analyst, but I do a lot of data analyst work. You could put data analyst potentially on your resume. You could potentially lie and put that on your resume. Now, if you are like a waiter saying that you're a data analyst, that is a little bit trickier. That's a little bit harder to support. And we'll talk about with resume hack number three, what you can do there. But for example, when I was trying to land a new data job, I already landed my first data job. My official title was actually junior chemometrician, which doesn't mean a whole lot to anyone. A chemometrician is basically a data analyst that specializes in chemistry, uh, but it's not a term that's used very often. So that was my official term. So I just replaced that as junior data analyst or data analyst uh, on my resume. And when I would apply for jobs, I got a lot more hits when I already had data analyst on a resume instead of just this chemometrician. Another really interesting or easy thing that you can do is just edit your current title by adding the word data or adding the word analyst. So this works a lot of the times with like business professionals. So I know one of the people I previously interviewed, Trevor Maxwell, who went through my data analyst accelerator bootcamp, he was a printer technician and we just added the word analyst at the end. So on his resume, it said printer, technician analyst. The term analyst basically means you use critical thinking. And so if you can slap that on your current title and you can justify that you do critical thinking at your job, I think that is worth doing because it makes you sound a little bit more analytically, right? A little bit more analytical and increases your opportunity to have the word analyst on your resume in multiple places, which will increase your ATS score. Same with data. If you can throw the word data as many times in your different titles, as you can, it's a little bit harder to add. Data driven is often a term that I kind of like, but once again, I think that is a little bit more pushing it. I think analyst is probably the easier direction to go if you're going to edit your title. So resume hack one was to choose your title specifically in the job title section. Hack number two is to edit your current or previous titles in your experience section. And hack number three is to edit or create or lie about your previous experience bullet points. So I'm not actually advocating for any sort of lying. But what I can say is this, that the experience section is supposed to illustrate your capabilities. Now, in that experience section, you have the different bullets for the different jobs you've had, and you really just kind of outline what you've done at those jobs. So for example, if I waited tables, I was a waiter. You know, you can basically have a bullet point of like waited tables and took credit cards and all the hard stuff that waiters do. But you might have made a chart or you might have used Excel. That might not be what you do on a day-to-day -day basis. You might have only done it once in your two years of working there. But I honestly believe that if you're trying to land a data job, those bullets that are more related to the data analytics world are more valuable than what you actually do on a day-to-day -day basis. Of course, you always want to tie in as many of your bullet points into data analytics as you can. So whether that's you know, making charts, looking at Excel, presenting things, customer service. Those are all things that you might do as a data analyst. But you really want to filter down and try to find the most data analysty bullets that you can. And then once you have those bullets, try to make them sound as data analysty as as you possibly can. So I would guess that most of you, no matter what your job is, you've probably used some sort of Excel worksheet at some point. Even if it was just once, I would make that a bullet. The more that you can creatively dress up your bullets and make them sound more data analysty than they actually are, the better it will serve you. And I know some of you guys are freaking out and you're like, Avery, you're, you're dishonest. You're telling us to lie. I'm not telling you to lie. I'm telling you to dress up. I'm telling you to make it sound a little bit sexier than it actually is. I'm never saying to completely make, if you've never touched Excel at your job, don't say you have. If you've never made a chart, don't say you've made a chart. But if you have done those things, even if it was once, you can have that be a full bullet for you. Keep in mind that these hacks, all three of them, 
are actually really just ways to beat the ATS, which the majority of the time is probably the thing that's rejecting you. But as the part of any sort of job hiring process, you, you always have the ATS and then you always have the hiring manager and the recruiter and stuff like that. So you're still going to have your resume be seen by a human. I don't know any company that just hires straight after the ATS. There's always going to be interviews. There's always going to be humans looking at your resume. And so if you completely lie on your resume, you can pass the ATS, but you're going to have to figure out how to lie your way through the human interactions. And one, I don't think that's moral. And two, I think that's very difficult. So whatever you're going to be saying, just try to be able to justify it one way or another in that section, in the next section of the interview process, which is going to be the human element where humans are going to be looking at your resume. They're going to be asking you questions in an interview. Resume hack number one, you don't really have to justify that because you can say whatever you want in the job title section of your resume. For two, your previous titles, as long as you can kind of illustrate what you did previously relates to that title, I don't think you'll have any issues. You might have some issues potentially if you list your previous company as a reference and they call that company and they're like, yeah, John worked as a data analyst. And they're like, no, John was a restaurant waiter. Kind of the same experience I have with Dijon. You can get caught there. But if you just add analyst or you don't list your old company as a reference, I don't think it's a big deal. And then three in your bullet points, what you did is what you did. So if you did those things, no matter how big, no matter how small, no matter how frequent or infrequent, you did those things and your experience is your experience. And so I think you should feel confident putting anything you've done in that bullet section. There you have it. Three easy hacks that you can probably do in the next hour to make your resume 10 times more powerful than it is right now. If you guys want to know how to test this and actually figure out the next steps with your resume and your job search, I highly recommend you check out my episode I did uh, with Ro Law. All of it in the show notes down below or it'll pop up on your screen right here. We talk about how to A, B, test your resume. And so that way you can land jobs even faster than these three hacks. Check it out.